What's up guys, Linux Noob here with another video. In this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate you my first experience with uh, Lubuntu 15.10 and why it was almost completely unusable for me. At least that has been the experience out of the box. So let's get started. Now since I wasn't really using my Peppermint OS 6 installations anymore, uh, Zubuntu uh, was my primary distribution and that's what I was using on a day-to-day -day basis. I thought it would be a good idea to uh, format the partition and put in uh, other distributions in there so I can try out new distributions. And if I like one, I would probably uh, stick it on my main SSD on this machine. So the first uh, distribution that I tried was this one right here Lubuntu 15.10 and I'll tell you right now uh, it's at a point now it's it's like as much broken that it's almost unusable at this point and I'll show you quickly what I mean by that now the installation process was flawless it was uh, as usual a standard uh, Ubuntu installation. The GUI installer uh, installed it and fired up uh, Lubuntu for the first time. Fired up Firefox from there, went to YouTube and tried to watch a video. And the first problem started there. There was no sound at all. Now I didn't really notice it uh, at, the, at the beginning that there was no sound sound controller icon in here that was the first time I thought probably it's muted so uh, I was searching for this uh, sound module over here on the uh, bottom pan and there wasn't any I fired up the menu went to sound and video and there wasn't any sound controller as well and that was the first time I actually discovered that there was no sound module installed at all so there was no sound try to play music through audacious and it showed that no also controller available or something like that so I actually had to manually install the uh, pulse audio module and this is 2015 and the distribution is shipping without a sound controller now this problem is probably specific to my hardware but I've been running Linux on this hardware for quite some time now it's more than it's probably more than a year now and I've tried out many distributions lately I've been using Zubuntu for quite some time I've been uh, I've been using or I've used Peppermint OS 6 before for quite some time all of them work flawlessly and it's also not like that that I'm uh, running LXDE for the first time. I've used uh, Peppermint OS 6 which also happens to run LXDE for quite some time and I actually appreciated it. It was flawless. But this is the first time I'm encountering such a problem that even no sound module, sound controller module isn't available. Now I would have loved to demonstrate to you that problem but uh, I had to install Pulse Audio modules so that I can get my microphone to work. Now I thought it would be a good idea to install the OS in VirtualBox and show it to you but what's really the problem. So as usual I had the Debian package, .deb, uh, package uh, downloaded so I tried to fire it up and install it. And if I can show you right now what actually happened. Uh, after it loads yeah there it is error dependency is not satisfiable now usually what this gdby package manager does is if there is any unmet dependencies it pulls it off through, uh, from the repositories and uh, installs it automatically this is something that the gdby package manager doesn't do on it on its own and this is the first time on any uh, distribution whatsoever that I'm encountering this problem now if I go to uh, this output section over here I can see that I can install it manually but why do I have to install a package manually 
when this almost works on every other distribution anyways if I, if we go ahead from there from the sound module well whole rant about sound module thing next up if I fire up software and updates you can see that I'm using the open source XORG uh, drivers for my AMD APU now pretty much the first thing I do after installing a new distribution is to go ahead and uh, download the AMD drivers of course I do a little bit of gaming on it as well although this is not my primary gaming PC but still sometimes uh, I do a bit of gaming on it and at the same time the distributions uh, are the desktop environment so to speak uh, that doesn't come with uh, vsync on like xfc lxd or things like these uh, the amd i've made a video before about it and i'll link it to the description down below that amd driver does uh, include an option that will force vsync or tear free display uh, in here so that is something i pretty much do at the beginning now the first time i installed ubuntu 15.10 it's the same partition same hardware I was running Zubuntu before went ahead installed the AMD drivers and it completely broke the dis display like after the reboot after uh, it was the AMD proprietary drivers were in work it doesn't even show up anything like there's no display you get to the boot screen and there's no display now this is a, a problem that I have uh, faced before uh, in Zubuntu to be specific now but for Zubuntu the workaround wo for me was uh, I went to like advanced options and from there I booted from the previous kernel version in there and after a day or two the Ubuntu team pushed an update and after the update it was working fine but this is a completely new installation and if I even go to the advanced options there are no other options to boot from a previous uh, version or previous kernel version in here so if you break the display driver and there is no display the pretty much the only option you are left with is what I did is to reinstall the distribution completely uh, yeah, I know there might be some options uh, by going to the command line interface and uh, removing some packages, uh, reinstalling some uh, other drivers and getting it to work. But that's not something that a average Linux user is willing to do. And why would I even do that when other distributions, other desktop environments have already got it completely right? That simply doesn't make sense to a general user anyways so the thing is now that I'm probably no not probably I'm definitely going to format the, this partition uh, Lubuntu at least in this state is uh, not for me and the next distribution I'm going to try is Manjaro uh, I as you can see I've downloaded all the ISOs for uh, four different uh, Manjaro d d distributions with different desktop environments uh, namely Fluxbox, KDE, LXQT, XFC. Now the LXQT one is probably the first one I'm going to try out uh, because I've been interested in LXQT for quite a long time and I really didn't find any good distribution that came pre-installed with LXQT. Uh, Manjaro is probably the first one that I'm seeing over here so that is probably the first one I'm going to give a try and let's see how it goes uh, now that's it that's pretty much it for my Ubuntu 15.10 rant uh, tell me what do you feel in the comments down below are you running Ubuntu 15.10 are you having the same kind of issues and what's your thought in general about it so leave it down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video